All right, everybody. Hello and great morning teaching every one of you. It's about 8.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here in Chesapeake, Virginia, in the United States of America. And welcome. My name is Lakeisha McKnight. This is the Virtual Bible Study. Uh, This is a study that happens just about every morning around 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to draw you closer to God. If you're looking for a closer walk with the Lord, I'm trying to understand how to really live this life as a believer, uh, because you understand that a part of your foundation as a leader is to be spiritually grounded, uh, then this particular show, or I should say this segment, this podcast is just for you. You see, we used to do this particular study only on Facebook, but because of changes that Facebook has made with audio live broadcasting, we are here on the Spreaker platform. So welcome. Uh, this is an added bonus for those of you who are probably just used to me having the night show. But we now also have the virtual Bible study that is connected to the station, the Leadership TKO Internet Radio Station. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, normally, uh, the virtual Bible studies, uh, the duration of them will last for about a half hour, up to 40 minutes. Uh, and we go through certain parts of the scripture, and when we talk about how does this apply, how does the scripture apply to our lives today, uh, we open it up with prayer, uh, and you have a unique opportunity to ask questions or leave comments, because there is a chat feature. So what I am going to do, I don't know if the platform has already sent out the notification already, but I am going to share and invite people from Facebook, since that's the primary platform that I leverage the most. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to type in join me now as I am live on the Spreaker platform. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, I'm just sharing it right now, right on my timeline on Facebook. I am going to try to share it in a few other places. So the next place where I am going to try to share it is on my official fan page. Okay, I'm going to see if I can share it directly there or in a group, depending on what I'm able to do from this point. Okay, I believe I'm able to share it on my page. Great. Great, great, great. But yeah, you can share it on in your social media platform. You can invite people to come on and and listen in live. Uh, This is a form of evangelism when you do share it. So that's how I think about it. You're also able to hit the love, uh, the heart, which lets us know that you can either you can hear what we're saying or what I'm saying or that you've enjoyed what you've heard uh, during this virtual Bible study. Okay. so thank you so much. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to pray and then we're going to read. And we're going to seek to digest the information by breaking it down and understanding what does it mean to us today. We're going to be looking at, once again, Luke 19, the first 27 verses. Luke 19, the first 27 verses. But before we dive into the scripture there, we are going to pray. All right. So, Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this gathering, this opportunity to to just to just commune with you, to connect with you in such a way. Father, we're we're in different places around the world, but we come together through technology. And we thank you for the technology and being able to use it to to build your kingdom and to draw us closer to you. So God, we thank you for this new day you've allowed us to wake up to see. We thank you for who you are in our lives. For you are King and your Lord, your ruler of all things. And we lift up your holy name. You are Lord. You are king. You are king. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. And so, God, may your will be done this moment. May we decrease that you may increase in us throughout the course of the day. And may you make your word plain that we may understand, that we may apply it to our lives. And so we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. So once again, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I know that you may be listening in from other places also around the world, not just Facebook, but you may be connected in other places. And so thank you so much for those of you who decided to visit. And even for those of you who 
have been con- connected consistently. And those of you who may go ahead and share the episode, thank you for doing that in advance. Awesome. All right, so Luke 19 reads as follows. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received Jesus joyfully. But when they saw when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I have I give half of my goods to the poor, and I have <clears throat> taken anything. Okay. I have taken anything, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Verse 11. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, Jesus said, A certain nobleman, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, your, your mina or mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have, author, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. Then another came and said, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you because you are a, an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my company, at my company coming, excuse me, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. But they said to him, master, he has 10 minas. For I say to you, that to everyone who has will be given, and from him who who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, and slay them before me. All right, so that is the first 27 verses of this chapter. Okay, and let's just go and understand what has happened and how does it apply to us today? Okay, so the first nine verses we learn about Zacchaeus, how he was a man of short stature, right? We learn about this man. So, and we understand that Christ was a part of, he was in a part of a crowd. He was uh, passing through and there was a crowd there. So he was probably traveling with a large entourage of pilgrims to the Passover in Jerusalem. But the crowd apparently refers to people in Jericho who, who lined the street to see Jesus pass through. And so they heard about the recent raising of Lazarus in Bethany, which was maybe about 15 miles away. So they did combine with his, with his fame as a healer and teacher. And, you know, it really stirred up the city there. 
So Zacchaeus, he had to climb in the tree because he was a man of short stature, but he wanted to see Jesus as he, he walked by. And so the sycamore tree is a sturdy tree with maybe low spreading branches. A small person can get out on a limb and hang, hang over the road. Okay. But Jesus, when he came through, said, look, I got to stay at your house. So, yeah, and you can imagine how Zacchaeus was, Zacchaeus was feeling. Okay, he was filled with joy. Right, he was filled with joy. But the people complained because they were like, you know, this man is a sinner. How is it? Okay, how is it that you you're gonna stay with this man? You know, what is the what is the deal? <laughs> right. So both the religious elite and the common people hated Zacchaeus. They didn't. They didn't. Want, they didn't understand. And in, in their blind pride refused to see, uh, you know, what possible righteous, pers- right, righteous purpose Jesus had in visiting um, Zacchaeus. But Jesus had come to seek and to save the lost. Remember, that is the purpose for which he came. And, 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 and that's really the emphasis of this part here. He didn't come to stay with, connect with those who believed that they had it all together. He came to connect with those who knew that there was something that they lacked the sinner, those that are separate from God to be to draw them closer and to have that, that, that relationship with him once again. Okay. And that's how it ought to be for us. You know, remember as a believer that we were once separated from God, but because we recognized that there was a need, that there was something we lacked that we couldn't fill on our own. That is what Jesus came to do to restore, right? That which was lost because we realized that something was missing. And that it only can be filled, it only can be found and replaced by God. Okay, by God. A lot of people are still trying to figure that out, uh, but we are not to force it upon them. Um, Their eyes have to be open to the truth. In this last part here, uh, we talk about the Minas, right? Uh, This is powerful here as well, because Minas is really a measure of money. It's really equal to slightly more than three months salary. So the mina was one six one sixtieth of a talent, meaning that the 10 servants in, this, in that parable that was shared had been given a considerably smaller sum of sum to account for than any of the three servants in the parable of the talents. Because, of course, this is comparable to the parable of the talents. So the whole point here, though. Is that, you know, even with the amount, it doesn't really matter as far as the amount that they were able to gain interest from. But here's here's the point. You know, the point is those with relatively small gifts and opportunities are just as responsible to use them faithfully as those who are given much more. The reward, you know, or, you know, being rewarded and actually uh, serving 10 cities. Your reward is incomparably greater than the 10 minas warranted. So note that also the rewards were really apportioned according to the servant's diligence. So the one who gained 10 minas was given 10 cities. And the one who gained 5 minas, 5 cities, and so forth. But that last servant, uh, he didn't do anything with it. He said he feared him. He feared him in the parable. Right? And so that's not good. (laughs) You know, had he had any true regard for the master, a righteous fear would have actually provoked or encouraged him rather than causing him to be slothful or lazy, not doing anything. So it's not good. Okay, it's not good. And God does not encourage being lazy or slothful. He wants you to manage what you do have well. And so that's really the point. We have to be mindful of how we're managing, you know, what God has given us, whether it's our talents, our resources, and use it to build the kingdom. Uh, We can't be slothful with what God has done, um, provided us with as far as to manage, but we have to manage it well. We do. We have to manage it well every single day. So what has God given you? Let me ask you this question. His, the gifts that you have within you, uh, you know, the monetary resources that you have right now to the T, to the very penny, managing it very, very well, knowing what's coming into your home, knowing what's going out. We have to manage it well to say that we're just going to keep it and not do anything with it. That's being slothful. That's being lazy. And it means you're not really, you know, you're not really trying to do your very best with it. 
Okay, and so he wants you to do your very best. He wants you to build. He wants you to use the wisdom. And so seek wise counsel, seek a professional, whether it's a coach or a banker, if you're talking about your finances, you know, seek someone who can help you to manage what you do have very well. Even if it's a close friend who doesn't mind assisting you, but seek help. Don't, you know, sit there and think, okay, I'm just going to keep it and not do anything because I'm just scared. I don't want, you know, to miss. No, don't have that type of thought. Okay, that's only the enemy trying to put fear in your mind. So, you know, I encourage you to do that. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, And then we're going to be prepared to come back tomorrow, Lord willing, to continue uh, with this chapter. So, Father, we, we thank you. I thank you for my brother, my sister, the friend who is coming by and listening into this episode this morning. You know, it's very self explanatory. You want us to be wise managers over all that you've given us. Uh, you, you, you constantly remind us that you came to seek those who are lost, uh, restoring those who are lost and, and strengthening those who are lost so that we can have an even more closer relationship with you. So, Father, I thank you for this opportunity and I pray that your will be done, not our will, but your will be done. So may your will be done. May you be glorified through all that we do today, tomorrow and forevermore. And so, God, guide us and direct us by your spirit that you will be glorified. Hallelujah. Help us to be wise managers over all you've given and help us to be a vessel that you can use to draw people to to yourself. So we thank you for it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.